Good morning. Good morning. Um, I want to welcome everybody out here this morning. Uh, I'm glad to see everybody. It's such a beautiful day, a little windy, but I'm glad everybody showed up for church. Um, go through the announcements a little bit. Uh, Quilters group meet this week. Um, uh, next Sunday um, at 6 p.m., the WOW will have a meeting here at Bible, and the men's group will have its uh, quarterly meeting over at Holy Trinity. So anybody who has not signed up for either one of those, there should be some sign-up sheets in the hallway. Um, <clears throat> There's some other things with some the committee meetings that are going on this week. Uh, there'll be a youth lock-in here at uh, at Bible on February the 9th. Um, Boston butt sales. If you are interested in buying Boston butts, please uh, see one of the youth. Or if you're willing to sell them, we have some tickets, extra tickets out in the hallway. Please those. Make sure that you sign up. Uh, what numbers that you had taken to sell. Um, and let's see, the church council will meet on February the 12th, and then right after that, the very next day is Shrove Tuesday. We'll have a pancake supper here um, <clears throat> with a silent auction and games. And then the following day is Ash Wednesday, February the 14th, Valentine's Day. So I'h put all that on your calendars. Um, are there any other announcements that I got, I got one. Okay. Nathaniel Rutland, he's going to head over to Buck Cooking this year, and he needs uh, oak wood, so if anybody has uh, you know, spare oak wood, uh, see Nathaniel, and, 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 and we need to get all the men to get together and, 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 and assist him on cooking. Will it take place that we don't know yet? We don't know where it's going to take place yet, okay. Okay, um, sign up sheet for the LCMC Minnesota Public Trinity next Sunday night. I need to give them a number this week, so um, this will be in the back if you plan to go. We've got uh, about 14 signed up now. Be good to have, have some more. So before you leave today, sign up if you plan to get there. And I, if you're not um, actively involved with the the men's group, um, we're setting up quarterly meetings and we're going to have one sometime in February, I mean, internally inside the church. This is a quarterly meeting for all four churches, for all four churches but the Bible's men group itself will meet sometime in February. We have set yet a date yet to come, right? That's just for the Bible. Just for Bible. Just for the, yeah, that's just for the Bible. Okay. Right. There's also a youth insert for what's going on. Well, good morning. Good morning, Dee and Michaela Potter. I know you're going to ignore me. And hello, Arliss Joe. If everything goes well, I will be home late tonight. Be there for the week. I want to say thank you to Loaves and Fishes. They left me um, four meals. Wow, they were good. I'm afraid to say which one I like the best because I know I'm going to make everybody else mad. So I'm not going to say anything at all. Um, I was with HB Run on Friday, and we bumped into a man um, in downtown Springfield who started talking to us about the Honor Flight. I don't know, have you, any of you heard of Honor Flight? A few of you have. So this is provided for veterans. It's free of charge. It gets you a ride from here to Washington, D.C. You get to spend uh, time with other vets, um, connect with them from the area. And then when you're in D.C., you get to visit all of the war memorials. I don't know if any of you have done that, um, but I got a chance. I saw the Korean War, the World War II, and the Vietnam. I didn't see the World War I, um, but that is, that's an amazing experience just in, in and of itself. And uh, in Dodge City, we sent three guys from our church on the honor flight, and they came back and could not say enough about how, how great it was and how, how important it was to them and how it helped them sort of integrate their whole experience in the military um, and, and reminded them of, of their love for the country. So if anybody is interested, if you're a vet and you're interested in going, I have the information, I would be glad to pass that on to you or at least give you a, a card for the, the contact person that's, that's setting all this stuff up. So see me afterwards for that. So we begin um, our worship time with the musical prelude as we prepare our hearts to receive Christ.
Let's stand as you are able. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening song, there is a bomb in Gilead. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful one, grant to your church the heart to hear your compassionate healing grace as we gather around your word. Then, as you will, grant us courage and compassion to bear that life-giving word of grace to a world in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning at verse 15. That can be found on page 190 in the Pew Bible. This is Moses speaking. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire anymore, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, they are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning at the first verse, and that can be found on page 1136 in the Pew Bible. Now concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he be not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Here ends the second reading. Yeah, they're like, I have, I had to hide it before I came. Y'all can't imagine. 
had no more. I had to hide this in my purse before we came, but I'm getting get you questions from the two children. Get questions, what is that? So what is this? And what does it do? It can turn on the TV. What else can it do? It turns Yeah, you can use it like to even change between like your TV and then YouTube and all that good stuff. So we're gonna um, act like when I do this, when I press the remote, it's going to control what you do, okay? Does everyone know how to play rock, paper, scissors? Yes. Show me how you do rock, paper, scissors. Like you normally would do at school. Use your voice like you do at school. Okay, so now as I press the remote, I need you to do it like the remote's telling you to do it, okay? Are you ready? Fast forward. Rock, paper, scissors. I guess I hit the mute button too and I didn't know about it. <laughs> Did I? All right, I'm going to unmute. Okay, so that means everybody can make noise, okay? Now, we're going to go slow motion. Ready? Go. Fast forward. Um, pause. I'm going to turn that off. So there we go. We're off now. So this is remote control can do great things, right? Great things you think, or not. <laughs> it was. It can, and guess what mama just did? I got my hand when I pull up the right tab. The remote, when I was in the remote, that's the phone, that's okay. All right, so the main part of the story is, okay, so we have the remote and it controls you. Pastor's going to read some scriptures here in a little bit about when Jesus says something and immediately it happens, right? So Jesus is, is walking, mm, oh my God, Jesus, yes, and there is a demon-possessed person, correct? And so Jesus says, spirit leaves, and guess what happens? The spirit leaves, right? So all that happens is God, ha Jesus has to say it and it happens. Unfortunately, parents don't always have that control. Do they? <laughs> no. But why do you think that Jesus wants to be able to have control? Is it because he wants you to do exactly what he says when he says it and he just wants to control every little part of your life? Or do you think maybe it's because Jesus and God wants what's best for you? You think it's because he wants what's best for you? So Jesus and God are definitely in control, just like the remote control can control the TV. And usually you have control over your phone unless you hit the button that closes out the window, right? So just remember as we go on through, throughout the week that we always want God to be in control of our lives, right? So we want to constantly pray and ask God to show us what he would want us to do and how he wants us to live, okay? So let's fold our hands. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for being in control. Please lead us so that we do your will. Be with us this week. For this is for we pray in your name. according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. See, what she explains with her phone is the reason I print my sermons out and don't trust an iPad, because that's what would happen to me. <laughs> As they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as scribes. 
And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands, and even the unclean spirits obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of the Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. Although the four Gospels tell it differently, each in their own unique way, they agree on this point. At God's ordained moment, Jesus began preaching a very simple message that concerned God's presence among his people. The kingdom of God has arrived. Very simple. According to Mark, that message centered around three verbs, action things. Repent, believe, and follow. These are given as appropriate responses to Jesus' preaching. But they are not the only responses that our Lord's preaching elicited. This morning's gospel text shows us two other responses. The first is amazement, and the second is the stirring of evil. The way that Mark tells it, this simple sermon is akin to the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. It's war. Jesus has kicked off war. A war to win the hearts of his people and a war to overthrow the demonic power that held many good people in its grip. Mark states that people were amazed at the way in which Jesus presented his ideas. It was real different from what was going on around them. Rabbis would normally quote numerous sources from memory in presenting their arguments. So-and-so says this about this text, but so-and-so says this over here, and so-and-so says that back there. And here's what I think. Preachers do the same thing, right? Jesus, in a shockingly different style, spoke with authority. That is, he simply stated what the text meant or what God intended that we hear. There was no hemming and hawing, no relying on others' points of view to bolster his points. He simply said what God told him to say. Amen? Amen. Lutheran said amen? The sense is that his listeners were shocked into silence. They talked among themselves, but they, they didn't know what to say to him. And into that silence stepped the second response, this new reaction to Jesus preaching. Instead of, and I know this is tough for Lutherans to get their heads around, instead of, amen, preach it, brother, came a totally different voice. You've come to destroy us. What do you want with us? We know who you are. You could, I guess, write that off as a normal reaction among longtime church people about a new preacher. He's destroying the balance we've had around here for years with his new and different ways kind of response, and, and we don't like that. But Jesus knows this is different. This is evil. This is unclean. This is demonic. And evil is not going to go down without a fight. 
C.S. Lewis pointed out that every inch of the universe is claimed by God and counterclaimed by Satan. It's going to be a fight. No other way. And the demons had been the authority figure for a long time. They have no intention of just laying down and letting Jesus do whatever he wants to do. They're going to come after him one way or another. How serious was this threat? How powerful was this foe? Well, for us, it's insurmountable. We don't have any power against something like this. Luther described this well in his most popular hymn. He wrote, no strength of ours can match his might. We would be lost. We would be lost. For Jesus? Well, in the Greek version of this story, Jesus utters three words to the demon. Quiet, come out. And it happens. Luther again, in that same hymn, wrote, one little word subdues him. When we are in Christ, one little word subdues the demonic. When Luther was asked, what is that one little word, he responded, boo. Now the man is reported to have taken an inkwell and thrown it at the devil. So he had some kind of contact with the demonic part of the world. He says, very simple. When you're in Jesus, boo, there's enough. He said some other grosser things, but I won't tell you about those. My hunch, my hunch is that most of us are more than a little uneasy talking about evil or unclean spirits. My hunch is that we're not sure what to believe about such spirit beings because they don't fit into our worldview. We're okay with angels. We can talk about angels. They're the good guys, right? But what about demons? They're spirit beings too. But our worldview doesn't know what to do with evil, doesn't know how to define evil. And so we get uneasy about this. Further, many of the descriptions in the Gospels about people who were controlled by an evil spirit sound more like medical issues to us, like maybe epilepsy. And well, that's much easier to manage and deal with than personal encounters with evil. But my faith experience has convinced me that evil spirits exist. I think at least on two occasions I was face to face with one and that we ignore that possibility to our spiritual peril. Now, when you say something like that, people write you off as a kook. M. Scott Peck, who was a very well-respected counselor, wrote about his encounters with evil spirits. That's what happened to him. He was dismissed as being crazy. But what I will tell you is, if you encounter one, don't try and do it in your own power. If you're not dripping with Jesus, you're in trouble. Look at the response that this exorcism creates. I'll use the message translation so you can hear this very clearly. What's going on here? A new teaching that does what it says? He shuts up the filing, demeaning spirits and sends them packing. In other words, Jesus is putting his words into action. He's not all talk. He puts his money where his mouth is. His way of presenting his ideas is shocking enough. But the people begin to recognize his authority not simply by what he says or how he teaches, 
but because he's not all mouth. What he says gets carried out. Evil must respond to this invasion by God. What that means for us is that the kingdom of God has arrived, as his preaching says, and it has done so in the person of Jesus called Christ. Mark's gospel draws us back to that point time and time again. It keeps asking the question, who are you? Who are you? And we as the reader are supposed to wrestle with that. Who's Jesus to us? Who is he? Mark forces us to face the question, do we believe that the kingdom of God has arrived in the person of Jesus? Do we believe he's the Holy One of God? And are we prepared to repent, believe, and follow? I can't answer that question for anybody else. Sometimes I have trouble answering it for myself. But that's what Mark's Gospel brings us back to time and again. So I leave it with you. Let's pray. Lord, Mark leaves us facing stark and difficult questions to answer. Questions that really we cannot answer through our own understanding or effort. Answering yes today and every day takes and requires the movement of your Holy Spirit deep down inside our being. And so we ask for faith to say yes and to keep on saying yes to you. We ask for the courage to repent that we might know your forgiveness. We ask for the ability to place our trust in you daily. And we ask for the privilege of following where you lead. We ask to be counted as your children empowered by your spirit. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Our song of response is the blue insert, Our Father, We Have Wandered. <laughs>
confess our faith together using the words of the uh, Apostles' Creed. We confess saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, I come first of all in rejoicement. I rejoice with Sierra and Wyatt Smith at the birth of a healthy baby. And thank you that you saw them through this time faithfully. I give you thanks for I give, you th I give you thanks for reminding me of your great artwork and your beauty and catching my attention this morning with the sunrise and the beauty of that early morning. Lord, in your mercy. I also rejoice with my son Seth and his wife Mary Beth. And the Navy seems to be moving, and he has been assigned to the blue crew of the missile submarine Alaska, and that this kind of prison that he's been in for the last five or six years will be over in April, and I rejoice with him at this new assignment. I pray for Dave, for all of the struggle with his cancer that he's been through, for Tammy and her continuing battle with cancer. I lift up to you, Ashley, as she continues with this pregnancy and glad that things are going so well. We pray for Fran recovering from uh, surgery for her brain tumor. For Ann with us again this morning after her heart procedure and for Judy with us after her shoulder procedure. We continue to lift up George to you that he would recover fully from this back surgery and be pain free. We pray for Matt in this long and painful and difficult journey that he is on with cancer. I lift up to you my friend Ralph as he cares for his friend Fred, who is not doing well, and for Margaret, his wife, who gets a little better. For Pastor Rusty with her new battle with cancer. For Barry Cobb and his hip surgery, that you would bring healing and wholeness there. For Bailey and, and for Jeff as they struggle with different forms of cancer. And for others whom we name in our heart who need your touch, who need your healing, who need your hope, who need your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those families struggling with loss, for the families of Cody and Kenneth and John and Caleb and Louise and Matthew and Jeanette, and Carolyn's family and Betty's family and Charles's family and Norris's family. And I'm sure there are others that we know in our heart. I lift up and I add my friend Sandy to that with her family. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, there are those who have been on an incredibly long journey, a journey that would, as we look at it from the outside, wear most of us out, would have us wondering where you are. And so I lift all these names up to you, asking that you would come to them in a new way, that they would feel your presence and know your love for Lisa, for Jason, for Mom and Dad, for Sharon, for Stephen. For Rick and Paul, for Brenda and Mary and Daniel, for Audrey and Sarah and Dorothy, for Virginia and Arame and Isabel. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
I give you thanks that there are those people who instead of running from danger or hardship run into it. And so I lift up to you all those who are in the front line, in the military, in fire, in law enforcement, and in hospitals, and give thanks for them, that you would use them in a way that will profoundly touch lives. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, O oh Lord, for our ministry partners here and around the world, for Danny and Rebecca, for John and Carol, for Jimmy and his staff, for Lisa, for Kristen, for Christy, Amber, for Maritime Bethel Ministry, and for Matt and Christina, that you would use them to continue the process of sharing your good news in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ with each other. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread of suffering, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the supper was concluded, he took the cup of salvation, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. 
this is my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As Christ has told us, we are bold to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of the Lord for the people of the Lord, we invite all who confess Christ as Lord to join with us in this meal of celebration. You may be seated. of Christ given for you. The body 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 of Christ given for you. See, that's why I print my sermons out on paper and don't, listen, don't require an iPad because that would happen to me too. <laughs> The body of Christ given for you. <laughs> Bless you and fill you with his love and hope in Jesus' name. The body of Christ given for you. May the Lord fill you with his spirit, with his joy and his hope. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. May the Lord fill you with his joy, with his strength and his power in Christ's name. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ which is given for you. The body of Christ which is given for you. The body of Christ given for you. May the Lord fill you with his joy, with his hope, and his strength in Christ's name. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you to life everlasting. Amen. the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you both this day and forevermore. Amen. Our closing song, O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
Carson Burns, they say for are united, and they're united in bringing you a pastor uh, that you will love and cherish for years to come, I can assure you. Also, Paul tells us a lot about the church, and he tells us that we're to be united together, that we're to love each other, right, and love above all else, and I encourage you to do that today. Um, many don't know this, Richard Hall spends his off days uh, typing out emails, setting up schedules, calling people. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty daunting task. And I would ask you to just lay hands on him, encourage him, and tell him thank you for what he does for Bible Week and Church. And also, uh, the, the, the little things, we can be divided on, right? We can be divided on the temperature in the church house, the color of the walls. We can be divided, divided on the carpet, the carpet floors, or what have you. But the big things, we should be united on. And that's the Lord we come. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your goodness. I thank you for sending your Holy Spirit that's working right here in this church. And I know for a fact that uh, Lord, we love you uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt. And as a united people, you're going to bless us beyond the shadow of a doubt. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Grow in faith, love God, serve others, share Christ. Amen.